Hi, this is Jamie Steinberg with Starry Constellation Magazine. Dana, I'm quite intrigued by your character, Margaret, and how she gets along uh, or so with Dwight. Talk about the backstory you were given about their kind of connection. Um, what Terry Winter told me um, was that uh, Margaret was a character that was going to be more developed in the second season, but in the first season, uh, she runs this horse ranch in Oklahoma where Max's character Armin w works and Sly comes work or Dwight comes looking for him at, at my ranch and uh, he claims that he's a private investigator but it's a little fishy uh, especially with his alligator shoes and his shark skin suit so I'm not quite sure what's going on and I don't trust him but as uh, Dwight and Margaret get to know each other. There's a bit of a flirtation, there's a bit of a dance, and then it starts to become who's using who. We don't quite know where it's going, but it's definitely going someplace different. All right, and the next question is for Rocco. Hi, thanks, thanks for doing this. And um, what I wanted to ask you is, um, I'm sure being on set, there's a lot of cool things to happen. Was there was there any funny or cool behind the scenes stories that happened while you both were filming on set? I almost got trampled to death by a horse. Did you? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Dana? And we all laughed. <laughs> it was hysterical. Um, gosh, I don't know. I feel like, you know, when we're on set, we're so focused on getting it done that I don't think we had a lot of time to play, did we? No, no. I mean, you know, obviously there's this downtime on sets, you know, where you're just, you know, bored. But, uh, yeah. no, I mean, uh, all the fun was had in front of the cameras. Yeah, I think much. for me, the last episode, um, uh, there's a moment where Stallone's character has to get on a horse. And that was interesting because the poor man has had so many operations from all the stunts that he's done that uh, it, it was it was a bit of a, uh, yeah. yeah. He it was did a, it, though. He did it, he did it. But it, it was a bit of, a, you know, oh, my God, be careful, you know, because uh, it's not easy getting on a horse, as we learned. <laughs> no, it is not. Yeah. No, it is not. They're a prey animal, I, I learned. That's why they're so unpredictable they're they're the prey yes yeah. yes, yes no doubt yes yes i'm glad to see max you didn't get stomped by the horse <laughs> thank you me too thanks right. thanks michael you have the next question hi there i just wanted to talk about the fact that you are both very well established voice actors as well uh, and Dana, when I listen to you, all I hear is Lois Lane. So I wanted to ask and give you a fun one. Was anybody, whether he was on set or not, daring enough to do a sly impression? Not while he was around. But we all did it <laughs> when he wasn't around. But we all did around. it when he wasn't around. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we would, yeah. like, get together, me, Dominic, Vinny, Chris, Calvino, and we'd... We'd run lines, we'd learn lines together, and somebody inevitably would have to read Sly's lines, <laughs> and Vinny would always like to Sly, you know, that, 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 you know, that famous Stallone cadence, but never in front of the man. <laughs> All right, Monica, you have the next question. Hi, um, this is for both of you guys. Obviously, I've watched both of you in multiple projects, Super excited for this one. You guys are fantastic. So I wanted to know for Margaret and for Mon and for, for you guys, what was it like developing them and then kind of working on the ranch and learning all of that, but having to balance sort of getting pulled in a little bit into that mob mentality and some of the drama that comes along with that? Well, it's great when you get to work outside because you don't have to do a lot of acting. It's, you know, it's not, it's not a set, it's real life. It actually was a working ranch. And it was gorgeous. Beautiful. Yeah, and you have horses, and you get the smells, and you get the shit, and all that stuff. So that kind of is makes it so much easier. Uh, for me, it, the hardest thing was getting back on a horse because people. I've done a lot of westerns. People think I ride, and I don't. So I just decided on this. I was going to get over that because 
obviously for some reason I need to be on a horse because it keeps happening. <laughs> so um, I just I tell the story that before I went to Oklahoma, Chloe Webb, who was on China Beach with me, has become a horse therapist, wherein she uses horses for emotional therapy. And she works with, you know, vets, I mean, like, you know, military vets or people who are scared of horses. And horses are great for therapy. They really are because they, they feel everything. As you said, they're prey. And the reason they feel everything is because they're wondering what's, who's going to attack them next. So um, I, took, I had a session with Chloe up in Malibu, and I cried like a baby. And you realize that the horse is as scared as you are. And um, I got on the horse again, and I rode, and I, I'm over it. So it was kind of a fantastic thing for me. I'm de definitely afraid of them. You know, I, I mean, I, I never wanted to cross behind the horse. I was told that, you know, if you go behind the horse, you have to never break uh, contact with, it, with your hand on their body. But um, I just, like, was deathly afraid of getting kicked. Yeah. Um, I had to, I didn't have to ride, but I did have to a couple of times walk a horse across, you know, the, the pasture, whatever, from point A to point B. And it was probably the, the hardest thing, just that simple thing. I was, like, drenched in sweat. It was 110 degrees out. And, you know, your instinct is to, like, look at this. If you don't know any, what you're doing, you've never been around a horse, you're leading the horse, you want to, my instinct is to, like, look at it, you know, and, but, you know, someone who does it every single day of their life, they're just walking it, and it's natural. Um, that thing is so big and strong, <laughs> and I'm not a big guy. It was everything I could do, like, just to, like, look like I wasn't struggling, that it was perfectly normal. I was drenched in sweat. I mean, I never was just such, I couldn't believe how hard it was to simply walk a horse. For someone like me, a city kid who's never been around horses, like, ever, um, and to look like I've been doing this, like, my whole life and it's perfectly natural. The poor guy, it was a complicated shot. I think we had, like, three cameras going at once. Probably, yeah. And he had to do it over and over again. And, oh, my God, the sweat was just pouring off. I mean, yeah, I mean, it was literally 110 degrees in the shade. <laughs> yeah. Very, very hot. But... They are they are beautiful animals, though. And they it's really nice are. to see you guys interact with them and for them to be, like, a character on the show. Yeah. So that's fantastic. Thank you. All right, Carissa, you have the next question. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Um, people go into shows like this and they have preconceived notions of what they may or may not be. And I'm wondering, what do you think will be the most surprising thing about Pulse of Kings to people who just wander in? I think how funny it is. I think... Uh, it's pretty funny. Yeah, I think that uh, because it's a Taylor Sheridan show, that there's a certain kind of mythic seriousness to the West, you know? And I think that Stallone and Terry's humor, dark humor, yeah. brings a whole nother thing to it. So I think it's kind of a great combination of dark and light. I mean, Terry Winter is one of the funniest guys, one of the funniest storytellers. I mean, verbally, when you're just with him and he's just telling a story, he's hysterical. And uh, from his time on The Sopranos, right through through Tulsa King, he's he's really knows how to like, nail the, the hysterically funny you know, absurdities, particularly in mob culture and mob life, but in, in, in regular everyday life. So the show is actually, it's a drama, but it is unexpectedly hilarious at times. All right, Jamie, you have time for another question. Jamie, you are muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought I had clicked it. Um, Max, is there anything about your character that you sort of um, adjusted or thought maybe, okay, he wouldn't say this or an affectation he may have about this in particular? Is there any kind of guidance or a little um, adjustment that you gave for your character based on what you read initially? No, I mean, I... The, the writing was so great, you didn't have to do that. But I did, you know, my usual, you know, actor job of um, building in a backstory and context and stuff like that. But no, I mean, um, when you're lucky enough to get great material like this, that it, you don't have to do that. That's when you're working on something that's like a real piece of dreck that you like, you have to like create it. And then you end up making a bad writer look good by, you know, deftly, you know, 
making things, making, you know, dialogue that's not natural, making it natural by improvising and doing it. But that wasn't necessary for this. All right, Rocco, you have time for another question. Okay, thank you. Um, was there, what did, what did you both love most about being on set for the show and playing, playing your roles? I, I think it's because it was such a great cast. And the crew. The crew were great. Too. I mean, just loved yeah. everybody at work yeah. from from all the way down the line. Every single person on set. I mean, I'd never had that much fun on a set, maybe ever. It was wonderful. I mean, we were there for six months almost, um, in oh, the wow. middle of nowhere, and a lot of us were misplaced. You know, New Yorkers and Los Angelinos, and we all just had each other. Um, and there wasn't much to do outside of work, so I was always just couldn't wait to get to work where I'd be around my friends, you know, and get to play with this great character and this great writing and Sly and everybody. Um, that was the best thing about it. I, I, we differ on this. I like discovering Oklahoma. <laughs> I, I found, I mean, it's so not my experience in life. And, um, Nor mine. And I had a lot of downtime, so I went to a lot of museums. And you hit that banjo museum? I missed the banjo museum. Oh, yeah, you missed out. You but missed I, I, out. I, I did go to the Cowboy Museum, and I recommend the first uh, Americans Museum, the first Americans Museum. Um, I got some good ones. You can knock those out in the first 48 hours. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, Thank you. All right, Michael, you have time for another question. We already kind of touched on this where we're talking about how Taylor brings in maybe the southern or western charm, and then Terrence Winter brings in maybe the east coast uh, cynicism. Uh, Max Armand seems like the perfect mix. He seems like a man caught between both worlds. He is, yeah. Did you struggle with either aspect of that? Because as no. a city guy, it seems like you might get the East Coast part, but... No, that made it easy. You know, I'm not playing a native Oklahoman, and I probably wouldn't be cast as one. Um, this, like, pizza face of mine. <laughs> but, like, no, I mean... It was perfectly, like, almost like it could have been written for me. A, 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 I think it was written for you. <laughs> a, a, a displaced New Yorker. He's just, he's just uh, he's living there for 19 years, and he's planted the flag for himself and started a family. And uh, But he's from he's from Brooklyn. and uh, But, you know, I look good in this cowboy hat and the boots and the, you know, the belt buckle and all that stuff I got to wear and working but, with but the horses. But you got to see what's great. He's got the cowboy hats in the booth, but then he's wearing his Elvis Presley gold sunglasses. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's got a little bit of the, little bit of the, the Brooklyn thing still going on, <laughs> you know. Love it. Thanks. All right, Monica, you have time for another question. Um, I wanted to ask both of you, you know, we've spoken to a bunch of the actors for the show. A lot of them said a big element um, in filming this was freedom, the freedom to be able to say different things that they want, try new lines, uh, you know, improvise. So for you guys, what was that like? And um, Actually, in that we're not allowed to improvise. That was actually not, uh, it was well, not encouraged. Welcome. It was not encouraged to no. improvise. In fact, there was a, like a Who have you been talking to? A memo <laughs> went out from Terry, to, could you please stop messing up my dialogue? <laughs> You know, because we're some people playing fast and loose. Yeah, I mean, I've been so trained to respect the word that it's kind of like when people start improvising, it's like, oh, are we doing that? Okay, you know. The thing is, I, Sly inherently loves to improvise, and so you go along with it, you know, you have to. Yeah, Otherwise, he's a you're writer. Not, yeah, you're not going to not play off somebody who's doing something different, you know, but it's always, it's never gone, like, off the rails. I don't know if Terry would agree with that, but, you know, I only improvise if I'm trying to make bad writing better or if there's a moment that just seems like I just want to massage it a little bit, but you don't really have to do that with Terry's writing. It's like only doing yourself a disservice. You're going to miss out if you improvise something. That's you're gonna true. A joke's yeah. not going to land that would have been freaking brilliant, you know, and you're only cutting your own legs off if you do that. So I, I never wanted to particularly improvise. Thank you guys so much. It's so interesting how all of you did a different 
method, but it, it, it works. It all works when you watch it. Let's hope. All right, Carissa, you have time for another question. Because we didn't get to see a lot of your characters in the first two episodes, I was wondering if each of you could just tell us what's the most important thing we need to know about your character. I think for Margaret, um, is that not as all as it seems, that you think she's just this woman who really likes horses, but that she might have another agenda because there's an ex-husband somewhere that is really a problem. So I think that uh, she, she's not just the nice horse lady. I think Armin is uh, uh, one of these people who's completely living a, a lie. He's, he's a very repressed guy. Um, he ran away from trouble and is pretending to be, you know, a, a very quiet guy living under the radar. And Sly's character Dwight shows up and sort of blasts a hole into into that. And Armin is forced to um, deal with who he is, deal with his past, deal with consequences. Uh, his wife has no, had no idea about his background. Um, and it sort of just blows a hole in, in his very safe, um, shallow existence. Thank you. 